2013 is a year of destruction and death. Of long simmering rebellions erupting into open violence. It's the year of Filipinos rising. And government responding. But the four barrel system is unconstitutional. While technology empowered us, the NSA specifically targets the communications of everyone. It, it also destroyed our confidence in governments, <laughs> and sometimes in each other. It's a year of growth for the Philippines. Your Pakistan, you don't want this. The president is an athlete. Capped by a crisis of leadership. That I renounce the ministry of Bishop of Rome, successor of St. Peter. It's a year of endings. <laughs> and beginnings. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. 2013 is a year of creative destruction. What economist Joseph Schumpeter called a revolution from within, incessantly destroying the old one, incessantly creating a new one. From the economy, to politics, to social media, it's a year when old structures are destroyed, replaced by new ways of doing, of living, of being driven by new realities and new technology. In 2013, hybrid news group Rapid, in its second year, drops beta. Merging media and technology, we define our cycle. Multimedia journalism, amplified by social media, to harness crowdsourcing and collect big data. Our patented user engagement model crowdsources the mood of the day, stringing together cause and effect, highlighting events that moved us and the way they made us feel. For the first time in nearly 600 years, a pope resigns. It's a time of crisis. It's a church plagued by leaks of confidential documents from a trusted aide, exposing an alleged network of gay priests with inappropriate influence inside the Vatican. In the middle of all this, Pope Benedict XVI resigns. With full freedom, I declare that I renounce the ministry of Bishop of Rome, successor of St. Peter, the See of Rome. The See of St. Peter will be vacant and a conclave to elect a new supreme pontiff. The conclave meets, days of black smoke, then finally white, revealing Argentina's Cardinal Jorge Bergoglio, now Pope Francis. Nine months later, Pope Francis is Time Magazine's Person of the Year. Even America's oldest gay magazine, The Advocate, names him Person of the Year. Why? Time says it best. Pope Francis is embracing complexity and acknowledging the risk that a church obsessed with its own rights and righteousness could inflict more wounds than it heals. Mood meter, 89% happy, 11% inspired. shows technology removes limitations of time and space on the spread of ideas with good and evil results. On April 15th, bombs explode on Patriots Day near the finish line of the world's oldest marathon in Boston. One of the bomb makers, Tamerlane Tsarnaev, is an American with Chechen roots, radicalized to terrorism online. Internet is today the principal mean medium of communication by terrorists and extremist groups because we have seen a number of extremist groups are using the net to reach out to their supporters, to radicalize, to recruit people, to indoctrinate them and get them to go and do terrorist attacks. Mood meter, 64% afraid, 14% sad. 
What did 2013 look like in moods? Well, we were happy and angry. Here's a breakdown of your votes. 28% happy, 20.9% angry, 11.6% sad, 11.2% inspired, 9.5% annoyed, 8.7% amused, 6.4% don't care, 3.7% afraid. May, election month, is 77% happy. Nearly 80,000 precinct count optical scan or PCOS machines are deployed and Rappler monitors them every step of the way. Still, the slow pace of results on election day, May 13th, spikes votes for angry and annoyed. Rappler signs a memorandum of agreement with the Commission on Elections for greater transparency, helping make the May 13th elections the first time Filipinos receive real-time results, breaking down the count vote-by-vote, vote, minute per minute. We step into the era of big data. 44,465 candidates for more than 18,000 positions. Nearly 53 million people vote through nearly 80,000 PCOS machines in nearly 40,000 polling centers in 233 districts in more than 1,400 municipalities. That all comes to Manila, where more than 11 million rows of data are processed every 20 minutes, distilled for you on Rappler live results of the elections, and the bird's eye view in an interactive graphic interface. Real-time data allows you to zoom in geographically. This is what big data looks like on one page, hour-by-hour -hour transmission on the horizontal axis, and a breakdown by Picos machines on the vertical axis. These numbers yield great instant insight and instant big data stories. The highest spike of anger in May happens near the end of the month, triggered by comedian Vice Canda's joke about journalists Jessica Soho and Rick. Moody, 62% angry, 12% annoyed. The NSA specifically targets the communications of everyone. It ingests them by default. It collects them in its system and it filters them and it analyzes them and it measures them and it stores them for periods of time. In early June, Edward Snowden's revelations about the massive spying programs of the U.S.'s National Security Agency shocks the world. NSA officials say Snowden downloaded and removed about 1.7 million documents. What do they show? that the U.S. has been spying on world leaders and allied nations, that it was collecting internet, metadata, and tracking cell phones worldwide. More than anything, Snowden showed the power of technology we had only imagined. Mood meter, 67% afraid, 33% happy. On June 26, a massive win for the gay community. The U.S. Supreme Court strikes down the Defense of Marriage Act, or DOMA, which says marriage only happens between a man and a woman. It also rules against Proposition 8, a last-minute attempt to stop gay marriage in California. Barack Obama, the first U.S. president to support gay marriage, tweets, Today's DOMA ruling is a historic step forward for hashtag marriage equality, hashtag love is love. Mood meter, 57% happy, 39% sad. On July 16th, the Supreme Court votes 8-7 to seven to stop the implementation of the landmark RH, or the Reproductive Health Law. Some of RH's goals, to provide information, free, natural, and artificial contraceptives, as well as emergency obstetric and newborn care in public health facilities, reproductive health education to young people. These are contentious issues in Asia's largest Roman Catholic nation. After 14 years languishing in Congress and more than a year after it was signed into law, 
RH remains a dream. Mood meter, 72% angry, 17% happy. Ang strategiya, sagarin ang oportunidad para sa lahat, lalo na para sa mga mas nangangailangan. Hindi natin pa kay maghintay ng trickle down. The largest spike in mood votes in 2013 comes on July 22. The day President Benigno Aquino gives his fourth State of the Nation address. Mula sa matuwid na paggugol ng pondo hanggang sa epektibong koleksyon ng buwis, mula sa pagpapaunlad na infrastruktura hanggang sa maaliwalas pag pagnanegosyo na lumilika ng trabaho. Talaga namang malinaw ang payag natin sa mundo. Kaya na makipagsabay ng Pilipinas sa August ng kaunaran. Philippine economic numbers are impressive. The highest in Asia for the first and second quarters at 7.7% and 7.5%. Third quarter growth is at 7.1%, the highest among the Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN. For the first time in history, the Philippines receives investment grade status from the three most respected credit ratings agencies globally, Standard & Poor's, Fitch, and Moody's. Mood meter, 84% happy, 13% inspired. August is the angriest month of 2013. The lavish lifestyle of 22-year-old Jean Napoles sparks great anger. I love you, baby girl. Because her mother, Janet, is accused of helping steal the people's money. For the first time in a long time, institutionalized corruption in the Philippines has a face. Janet Napoles is accused of siphoning away the Priority Development Assistance Fund in exchange for hefty kickbacks for lawmakers. The Priority Development Assistance Fund has actually been in place since 1922. I mean, is it fair to say this was institutionalized corruption that's evolved or shifted with each administration? For me, it's a no-brainer. It's been going on for so long. Uh, it's, 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 it's just that nobody would dare to bring it out officially and with sufficient documentary uh, evidence. evidence, you know, because it's, it's such it's such an aggravation. An arrest warrant is issued for Napoles. She flees. Anger grows. Hashtag Million People March comes alive on social media. One Facebook post takes seven days to bring about 100,000 people to Luneta Park on Monday, August 26 with satellite protests in dozens of other cities nationwide. Like a contagion, we see the tipping point of the Philippines' first protest organized on social media. Mentions take days to hit 10,000 on August 25 and grows exponentially in the following hours. The next 10,000 mentions take nine hours and by the morning of August 26, each hour brings 10,000 more. Its peak hits at 11 a.m. of August 26 at almost five tweets per second. This is what that looks like on TweetDeck. Mood meter, 66% inspired, 15% angry. A day later, Janet Napoles sues rapper reporter Natasha Gutierrez along with six other journalists. Mood meter, 81% angry, 7% annoyed. Two days later, Napoles surrenders to President Aquino. Mood meter, 77% happy, 13% angry. Still, there is great distrust. Will Napoles receive special treatment? Will there be justice? But the anger mobilized into action did bring change. On November 19, the Supreme Court declares the Priority Development Assistance Fund unconstitutional. Mood meter, 88% happy, 5% inspired. September is the month of beauty, bringing two of three crowns for 2013 home to the Philippines. Actress Megan Young wins Miss World, a first for the Philippines. That comes shortly after Muchada Tool wins Miss Supranational, and three months later, Bea Rose Santiago wins Miss International. Mood meter, 82% happy, 7% inspired. 
Today, we imagine and create the world we want in 2030. As leaders around the world explore how technology can be used for social good, in September, Rappler, Google, and the UNDP hold PH Plus Social Good, pledging to work together for climate change and disaster risk reduction. Bringing together innovators from nearly 150 countries around the world, all committed to the idea that by working together, we can accelerate change. A day later, Rappler joins the Social Good Summit with Melinda Gates and other Plus Social Good members in New York City, a gathering focused on using social media for social good globally. Mood meter, 61% inspired, 17% happy. September is also a month of conflict. In the South China Sea, now the West Philippine Sea, the Philippines tries to hold China accountable to international laws. And hashtag Zambo crisis, when a faction of the Moro National Liberation Front, or MNLF, attempts to take over Zamboanga City. It begins September 8 and lasts until the end of the month, forcing 100,000 people out of their homes and igniting long-simmering religious tensions. On September 12, Rappler reports MNLF rebels surrender to police forces. They bring with them 35 hostages. The government denies the surrender despite the actions of the police on the ground. Parts of Zamboanga turn into a battlefield. A week and a half later, the Philippine National Police verify the early surrender. Rappler publicly questions this government's ability to manage a crisis. Mood meter, 83% angry, 6% sad. October and November bring more crisis. On the morning of October 15, a magnitude 7.2 earthquake hits the central Visayas, destroying, according to officials, with the energy of 32 Hiroshima bombs. Most affected are Bohol and Cebu, in the deadliest earthquake to hit the Philippines in 23 years. Mood meter, 64% sad, 20% afraid. A little more than a month later, Super Typhoon Yolanda, international name Haiyan, walloped many of the same areas with water whipped by winds of up to 315 kilometers per hour. Yolanda makes November the saddest month of 2013. Six of the top ten stories with the most sad votes this year are about Yolanda. A Category 5 storm, Yolanda is the deadliest Philippine typhoon on record and the strongest storm to ever hit land. It introduces a new concept to most Filipinos, storm surge, giant tsunami-like waves repeatedly engulfing whole areas. This is the devastation it leaves behind. Help comes slowly. Days later, anarchy. Looters raid for what they need to survive in worst hit Tacloban City. Bodies litter the streets. Although the world mobilizes, little aid gets through. It takes five days before food and water get beyond the more accessible areas. In the coming days, it becomes clear no one is in charge. We almost call it the shots here in the center. Well, you can see the, you can see the uh, process that is being undertaken, and it is a consultative uh, process. As the nation copes, Manny Pacquiao lifts spirits, winning his match with Brandon Rios. <laughs> Mood meter, 83% happy, 6% inspired. Oxford Dictionary chooses 2013's word of the year, selfie. But all this is not nearly enough to cope. 
especially when national and local government leaders blame each other for the slow pace of relief. Sa iba lugar ko, parang hindi lang ako magsasalita dahil bilang pangulo niyo, bawal ako magalit. Maski na gano'ng inis ko, dani ko nalang sa asim na sipu. E pag sinabi sa iyo, eto, eto dadaanan, niya, ano pa ba gagawin mo? Ibig sa pakinig, niya, at kumilos. Ano, iinsultuhin pa ba natin yung mga namatay? At sasabihin natin, namatay kayo dahil hindi kayo handa. You are not just that, you don't want this. And the president is an akilo. Political rivalry and lack of clear leadership do little to inspire confidence in a battered people. Mood meter, 81% angry, 8% annoyed, 6% sad. Creative destruction. Destroy, rebuild. That is 2013. The Philippines weathers the year's worst global natural disaster and must now, as the UN says, build better. Politically, a people empowered by new technology demands accountability. A political tsunami washes away a symbol of institutionalized corruption, the pork barrel. But change isn't easy. In 2013, kidnappings in Mindanao increase. The crime rate nationwide hits new highs, and media killings again take center stage. It may get worse before it gets better, but we have the chance to build better, to be better. Let's go into 2014 remembering, feeling, understanding. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rattler, tomorrow begins today. Happy New Year. <laughs>